Hmm. Hey, fellas. Welcome to the final episode of the Airwolf. And yes, it's me. I shave my beard. Every time I do that, my kids tell me I look like a dork. But I like to change it up every once in a while. So, <sighs> got it finished. In this episode, I get it all painted. And look at that. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's not black. It's I tried to replicate. I think it's called Phantom Gray Metallic. And um, that they that the actual airwolf was painted, and I tried to replicate that in the video, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. But it looks really cool. Um, it's a really good kit. It is. It's a nice kit. Um, I think there are only two kits: the AMT Ertl kit, which is not very good, I don't think, and then this Aoshima kit. And it's. I mean, I have no complaints with the kit. It is a difficult model to paint. Trying to get the um, the lines right and to look good. I've seen so many people build this thing and kind of and not get that right. I mean, I never want to like crap on other people's models, but this is really this is a really difficult paint job, and I think I did a decent job on it. So anyway, um, this will be up for sale on eBay. Um, by the time the video comes out, I always start my auctions off at $0.99. Cents. Um, shipping will be $30, and I only ship to the U.S. addresses. So if you're outside the U.S., sorry, just don't bid. <laughs> it's causing me a hassle. Anyway, um, enough jibber-jabbing. I'll put a link to the eBay listing in the description. And uh, let's get on with the video. Okay, so at last we left off. Uh, I was getting ready to glue the fuselage halves together. They went together pretty well, not too many issues. But I did have to, I mean, obviously I had to fill in the seam line. And that wasn't too bad. I used my CA glue metallic pigment, which it's like a black, so it's kind of hard to tell where I filled in. But I think I got everything squared away, okay? Um, one issue that I knew I was going to have was when I... Um, put this together, I was going to have to mask off this uh, section here, the, the, the base and all the workings of the propeller. So what I use for that is something that I hardly ever use, but I picked this up from my, my buddy Darren from the Model Geeks podcast is this parafilm. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is kind of neat. And uh, yeah, I've, I've never really used it before. I think he used it for windows, I think, one time. But it's like this waxy film, and you can stretch it like so. And then I just, I basically just ripped off small pieces, and it kind of sticks to itself. So you can wad it up into a little ball, and it just sticks like that. So I just cut up little pieces and stuck it in there and was able to get up in under there and mask that off. So I think that's going to work really well. The windows didn't cause me too many problems. I spent about 40 minutes masking those up very carefully. Just laid down my Tamiya tape and then used a sharp X-Acto blade and cut around the edges. And I think those will be okay. Uh, the bottom glued on really nicely. Now I won't know if there are any big crevices because of the two different colors of plastic until I get primer on it. Uh, I think it'll be okay. Uh, I did have to do some seam filling along the, the wings here. Now, they give you these door covers that were supposed to fit in some poly caps down here on the bottom. Now, from my understanding, in the, in the actual TV show, they didn't have covers on here. The wheels just stuck up in there and were open. Now, there really isn't a wheel bay in there, like a, a, a detailed wheel bay. You just kind of stick the wheels in there. So you can see I've butchered the heck out of these because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint the inside of these black since there's really no detail inside there. And then I'm going to paint the wheels separate and, and I did cut them, cut them pretty drastically. I just kind of butchered them up. And I'm going to throw them in here just like that and glue them down so that we have the wheels inside of here. No, it's not going to be perfect, but it will give you the idea that the wheels are retracted and I'll have to figure out a way either five minute epoxy and glue those in or some super glue or something but they'll be in there just like so now the I am going to do both of the uh, little uh, the the gun here for the wing on on both sides 
And then these guns, they're like three pieces and they fit on this little uh, external part of the, the wing here. They'll fit inside of there and I'll have guns exposed. And I'm not gonna glue these in. These, are, these can be interchangeable. And then they've got the closed version, which I will also paint up. And if I do decide to sell this on eBay, the person who buys it will get both so they can either have them closed or the ones with the guns exposed. I think that's kind of a cool idea. Um, I'm in the process of just kind of cleaning up. I've ran along with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, and I've tried to wipe everything down as carefully as possible. And now I'm gonna take a, my toothbrush and try to get any greeblies before I go to prime it. And then I'll take a tack cloth and run over it again. And then I will go ahead and spray my Mr. Servicer Gray. And then we'll start figuring out where my issues are, if I have any seams that are exposed that I need to take care of, and um, and then go from there. And I'll probably spray the white down first, but we'll get into the painting part here in a little bit. I went ahead and I glued the shaft on, on the propeller. Uh, I used some sprue goo. Since it was such a loose fit in there, I wanted to fill in all that to make sure it was nice and sturdy. So I just put some sprue goo down the hole and put the shaft in and then maneuvered it to where I got it to where it's pretty strong. I mean, it can break off uh, not as easily, I think, if I had just used to me extra thin, but it's nice and sturdy and I think that'll be, that'll be okay. I'll just have to do my best at masking and painting the propeller. The little one that did the same thing, although that one was a little bit better of a fit, but I went ahead and put the shaft on that as well. And uh, so we are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, finish cleaning this up, trying to get all the greeblies off, spray my primer down, and then we'll be back and ready to paint. Okay, so I have this primed, and my seams up here look pretty good. Uh, I don't see any issues with those. Now, right along in between the two windows, I didn't, didn't try to fill that seam. If you look on the real thing, there is actually a panel line right through there. Now, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to come down with a, um, a razor saw and try to just clean that up a bit and leave it as a seam. Once I paint this, it's not actually a, a black, and we'll talk about this here in a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a metallic, a dark metallic gray is what they painted the, uh, the upper surface of this. But when you get that dark, I, don't, I think that will kind of go away. I may not have to do anything with that. I know it doesn't look real good. But uh, I think that will kind of, the, the dark color will hide it. Now down here along the bottom, I do have a couple of uh, issues. Eh. Like right along here, it's not quite as sightly as I want it to be. And maybe along here, it's actually not as bad as I thought. I maybe, I think what I'm going to do with this now... There are a couple ways to handle this. I could just leave it and I think it would be okay. It's gonna be on the bottom anyway. Um, that kind of unsightly panel line there or the seam line. Um, I could fill it in with a harder filler, sand it and rescribe it, which is I think way overkill. I don't think that needs to be done. Or I can use some plastic, to, um, Vallejo plastic putty, which I think is what I'm gonna use. I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. So if you've never used this stuff before, see I use this because I can wipe it away with, with a Q-tip soaked in water. So I've got some water here. So all I'm gonna do is right along here, I'm just gonna take my, and this does get kind of messy. Just squirt it in there. Take a Q-tip with a little bit of water and just wipe the excess away. Now I did get some in this uh, panel line right here, right along here that I don't want it in. So what I'll do is I'll just take a toothpick Get a nice sharp point. And 
and then come along and clean that out. Take another Q-tip soaked in water. Now these little, these uh, uh, raised rivets really like rip my, my Q-tips. So kinda gotta be careful. Now, it's not going to make the seam line perfect, but it is going to fill it in so it's not going to be as noticeable. That's all it is. It's not, you know, I'm not trying to, to be perfect down here. It's just trying to make that, uh, that gap there just a little less unsightly is all I'm doing with this stuff. That's all I'm doing. Now you can actually let this dry and then try to wipe it away, but in my experience it does get kind of tough to do that. So I just squirt it in there and then wipe it away while it's wet. Okay, and it's just going to hide that gap. And this does tend to shrink a little bit. So keep that in mind. And I think that will be okay for that. I think I've pretty much taken care of this. Now, another issue is the, uh, the raised rivet detail I had to sand away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera. I'll get out my um, Rosie the Riveter. There's, I can't see any other way to recreate those raised rivets. So I'm just going to put recess rivets. It's on the bottom. I'm just gonna have to be good with uh, recess rivets and, and I don't think it's gonna be uh, noticeable unless you pick it up and really examine it. Okay, so what I've got for my riveter is I've, the smallest one I have is the 0.55 millimeter. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just placing a piece of tape. Now, this isn't like rescribing where I have to have like a sturdy piece of like hard tape, like Dymo tape or anything. I just want something to give me a little bit of a guide. Now I can actually come along here with a pencil and mark where I want the rivet line, but uh, just to save time, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna start where the rivet rivets pretty much end, and I'm just gonna take one pass and go across. And try to bring back some of that rivets. Okay, so you can see there, not perfect, but it will suffice. Go ahead and do this other one. Okay. And again. And when the model's displayed, you're not going to see this anyway. The only time you're going to see this is when you pick, if you pick it up. All right, so there we go. And I think that's gonna be good enough. It's not nearly as raised as the other stuff, but uh, it does kind of hide it that I had to delete the, delete the raised detail. So I'm gonna get on with this and then I'll look it over and see if there are any other issues I need to take care of. Um, I could probably fill in here along the, the, uh, the gap here along the intakes and make that flush. But to be honest with you, that's going to be a lot of work, and I don't know that that's going to be worth the uh, the hassle of doing that. I think we're just going to leave it as is. So, all right. All right, fellas, uh, I've got the bottom sprayed white. Now, I did take care of that seam line along the, uh, the in the center of the windows. I just did not like the way it looked, so I filled it in with Mr. Surfacer and carefully sanded that away. And uh, I think we were looking pretty good. So I sprayed the bottom with uh, white, uh, flat white XF2, and I'm gonna gloss the whole thing over. So 
Uh, we'll get into the pain here in a little bit, but I went ahead and I sprayed that last night. It's been a while now. I just have to mask off all the areas and that's going to be a big pain in the butt. It's going to take me probably an hour or so to do at least. And uh, so I've got my map here. I'm going to get on with that and I will see you once I get it all masked. Okay, so <laughs> it's been three hours since I started masking this this thing. And uh, this was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to mask. So I think I got it pretty close to where it should be. And I'm sure I'm going to have to do touch-ups. That's just the way it is. Um, but I'd rather do touch-ups on the white than on the darker color. Because um, what, what I'm going to do, and I've used my paint mule here. And I don't know if the video will pick up. i kind of looking at the camera here. I'm not really sure. Let me get some black. Well, we can look at this. Um, but there is a difference. So, from what I understand, the they painted it a... I think it's called Phantom Gray Metallic or Phantom Metallic Gray, something like that. So it has some, it's it's almost like a really dark silver. And if I look at some pictures, it looks like it almost has some of what of a green tint to it. So what I did with the paint mule and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to paint it with some uh, Mr. Color GX2. I'm going to try to get a, a nice glossy surface and I'm going to try to keep this as nice and shiny as I can, because I'm not going to be able to come in here and buff it. So I'm going to try to get as smooth as coat as possible. So I use some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner with this, spray it on thin, even coats. And then I'm going to come back with this Metallic Smoke by AK Extreme Metal. And it is a really dark, dark metallic. And when I did this on the paint mule, it seemed a little too bright and too metallic-y from the just judging on the pictures that I saw online. So when then what I did is I came in with some RLM 74, which is a greenish gray, and I thinned it down, uh, thinned it down a whole lot, like maybe 10% or less paint, and then the rest of it thinner. And I just went over it and gave it a filter, and I got this nice shade, which looks, in my mind, close to to what the uh, the pictures show that I've seen online. Now again, colors relative and you know in the eye of the beholder but I think that's going to work so I don't know how much of this painting I'm going to show I'm going to be try, trying to be really careful to paint and not you know paint down into my uh <laughs> my, I don't want any bleed through if I can help it I will probably have to touch up but it just is what it is so I'm going to get on with painting this down uh, once I paint the black down I am going to mark off mask off this area right here because I think this is supposed to be like a a camera or something or like um I don't know some kind of I don't know it's black on the on the uh, the real thing so I will mask that off already got got it set up in my Cricut where I can just print out a, a mask and, and and lay that in there hopefully it'll fit so I'm gonna go on with this and I will see you shortly All right, just to reiterate what I did. So first I sprayed down my um, Mr. Color GX2, and then I went over it with uh, Metallic Smoke by AK Extreme Metal. And then just to give it, um, to tone down the, the metallic, and to give it a little bit of a green tinge, I used this RLM 74 really thinned. So I thinned it down so I could control it. And then before, I'm, I'm about ready to take off the masking, I sealed everything in with this uh, X19 smoke, really thin, just to give it a, a seal because I misted this on so light. I'm afraid if I do any more masking or have to do touch-ups, it might peel that off the metallic finish. So I just kind of sealed it in. So let's go ahead and see what the damage is on our masking. Okay, so uh, it could have been a lot worse. Um, man, I almost hate to touch that up because it's so close. Now, because I'm not going to be doing any weathering, I can't hide any of these little mistakes. So I'm just going to have to come in here with a fine brush 
and just barely try to touch up. And then I'm going to put a clear coat of Tamiya X20, whatever that is, X22. Tamiya clear over the whole thing. Um, but other than that, I'm not, it's not too bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, this turned out pretty good. That was kind of tough to get that done. But uh, I think I think we're looking okay, fellas. All right, fellas, here it is. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> I had a little bit of an issue with the propeller. One of the uh, propellers actually broke off while I was painting it, which uh, sucked pretty bad. And I thought, oh, no, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to rip this thing apart. But uh, I was able to fix it. It's not perfect, but... Uh, you know, it's it's fixed, and unless you look really close, you're not going to be able to tell where I did the repair. But uh, there we go. I mean, the propeller kind of turns. It's a little sticky. I put a little bit of silicone lube in there. Not that anybody that's going to come up to this model is going to go. Well, they might, actually. People that don't uh, don't mess with models very much might come up and be like, well, woo, spin it. Um, the back one spins, too, but, uh, you know, I, I really wouldn't spin those if I were you. <laughs> but uh, there we go. I'm pretty happy with this thing. Um, take it off the base here. Now, what I did is I bent my acrylic rod so that you can pose it in a number of different ways. And what I thought looked the coolest was having it kind of angled down. And uh, I don't know, I just thought that was kind of cool. But you could pose it any which way. Like that. It's kind of cool. So, and we already talked about the base. Pretty happy with the way that turned out. Now, <clears throat> uh, last we left off, I was just peeling up the masking and looking at my, my painting. I did some touch-up on the white. It's not perfect, but it's uh, it's not, not real bad. And uh, just masking around the raised detail of these, um, of the rivets, it just was, was somewhat difficult. Um, especially on such a small model. Now, let's go ahead and take this off. So the propeller comes on and off just like so. And the only real weathering I did was I just did a um, a a a wash on the white part of the propellers just to, to bring out some of that detail. I'm not exactly happy with the way that turned out, but it kind of is what it is. And the bottom is painted this uh, NATO black. And the top of the propeller I painted like a, a real light gray. So we'll go ahead and take this off. So that removes. And I'm really happy with how this, uh, I learned from one of my viewers, it's a tail skid, not a probe. <laughs> so I learned what that is, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. And it just unplugs from my uh, little receptacle there. And then the guns come off just like so. They just have these posts which fit into the holes right there. Just like that. They just fit in there. Push fit. And voila. I ended up not using the uh, the retracted ones just because they didn't fit really well. I didn't think they looked good on because they didn't fit because they fit so poorly. There was like a big gap and I really didn't want to mess with them. So we're just, uh, we've just got the ones with the guns. The... Uh, kit comes with these decals and the decals on this kit are pretty nice. Uh, I just put the decal for this little white thing uh, just on the bare plastic and then I took some future and I hand brushed over it just to protect it and so it wouldn't fall off eventually. Uh, the gun, the um, I think these are rocket tubes on the bottom. I just uh, hand painted those and I think they look pretty good as well. And again I didn't do any weathering. The um, the the wheels un, under here, I just glued them in with uh, some five minute epoxy, and they uh, they stick in there quite nicely, and you're not gonna be able to see much of that anyway. Uh, but everything else, um, you know, I didn't cover a whole lot of the rest of the painting because it was just basically like hand brushing. I did spray it with um, a couple coats of Tamiya X22 Clear, which is really good. Um, gives a really nice shine. You know, something like this, if you want like a super glossy, really nice finish, you really need to buff it and polish it. 
and uh, but with all this raised detail I wasn't able to do that so I just kind of had to to do the best that I could with the, the gloss coats and I think it turned out pretty nice you can see my rivet detail in here on the bottom maybe camera won't pick it up because it's so white but uh, that turned out pretty good can't really even tell it's not raised rivets so anyway um, that is it for this build. I appreciate you watching. I will flash up some pictures and I will catch you on the next episode.